Hello, I am Sarah Villikin and welcome to episode 16 of How To Be Champion. Uh, I, uh, story time, sorry, I forgot that word. Uh, I hope you're having a good day. I've had a cream egg, <laughs> that was my breakfast, because it was in the cupboard. Fuck Easter, I'm eating it now. I don't even know, we wouldn't even know when Easter is, will we? No. Uh, so we're still in the section of good things that happened at school. This is episode 16 and this is number five. I discovered I'm not a daredevil. I've always done as I'm told. And when we went to Lightwater Valley, Yorkshire's ultimate theme park attraction, with the school, I was no different. I wasn't going to be Esty Carruthers, who was left behind because she didn't get back to the bus for the time we were supposed to. For all I know, she's still there and lives under the log flume with a massive beard and hobbit feet. My friend Kimberly and I broke away from the group of other kids who didn't like us and went off on our own. Kimberly was allowed to do anything she liked. She could play in the park across the road from us, whereas I had to make do with a church green that wasn't across a busy road we could get killed on. My mum had told me the things I wasn't allowed on at Lightwater Valley, basically the big rides. I was allowed on the dodgems because I'd been trained well on those. As a kid, I was always the passenger as my dad had a driving licence and I did not. He looped the seat belt over my head so it chafed my armpit and then proceeded to avoid all of the other cars. It takes real skills, but it's also very boring. It was very similar to just being in my dad's car on any journey. So we blitzed the dodgems, but I started to worry that we were going on too much and someone might stop us. I am so much fun. So we started to swap coats and bags, which made it even more fun. Being rammed by boys you don't know in someone else's coat is the height of entertainment, I can tell you. We didn't just go on the dodgems, we also went on the little train. I've always liked little trains since, since we... Oh, I've just torn a page of my own book. <laughs> Look, I've just torn a page. Oh, well. <laughs> Sorry, this is how much fun I am. This is how dangerous it gets. I've always liked Little Train since we started going on the one at the Marine Park, South Shields' ultimate park-based attraction every Easter, even the time when some skinheads started a mass brawl. And to keep us safe, my dad pushed my mum, sister and me into a coconut shy while he helped pick up an old policeman who'd been knocked to the ground. We still didn't win anything, which is proof that they are fixed. We went on the Little Train that year as a come down. That little train is also where I, first, where I first heard the word cheapies when my mum described when my mum said that she liked the train because it rumbled uh, as it went through the hair bells and gave her cheapies. Even if that's not the word you'd use for it, I'm sure you can imagine what I mean in my mum's face as she said it. The little train at Lightwater Valley was great fun. It was only a year ago that when talking to this <laughs> to, to, about this to a friend, I realised the little train at Lightwater Valley connects the big rides. You know, the big rides I wasn't allowed on. So it was basically transportation. Number six, I was better at maths than my sister. My mum and dad always went to parents' evening and I always went with them. I wasn't going to miss out on any well dones or hear them second hand when my parents might not remember the compliments word for word. One year, my dad was at work down the pit and unable to come, so my sister, Victoria, went in place of him. My mum and sister split up to cover the maximum amount of teachers. I went with Victoria. Because she is six years older than me and had most of the same teachers, a lot of them were commenting that she was too young to be a parent or saying how brilliant she was in their lessons. She was in the netball and rounders team and played the flute for fuck's sake. I rolled my eyes so much it hurt, then did a little cough so that they'd remember they were supposed to be talking about me. Finally, we got to the maths teacher. I'd been waiting for this one. The first thing he said was, well, she's much better at maths than you were. And I bounced all the way home. <laughs> Number seven, I learned how to say no to clarinets. Because my sister played the flute, my parents wondered what my musical instrument might be. I was self-taught on the recorder from a very early age. I also taught myself to read music and I got sheet music out of the library to play. My favourite was all of the songs from The Sound of Music, which I could play ably on the recorder. That's like being able to paint like an impressionist but shunning oils and watercolours for dog shit. My mum asked me which instrument I'd like to try and I said piano. My parents couldn't afford a piano, so they got me a guitar. I joined Mrs Chili's lunchtime guitar club, but my heart wasn't in it. I learnt Little Donkey and left. Uh, and that's where we have to end, episode 16. Uh, join me for the rest of the clarinet story uh, tomorrow at 3pm. I uh, hope you enjoyed today's episodes. Uh, take care of yourselves. Uh, eat some biscuits. Have a cream egg if you've got one. Don't wait for Jesus. Just eat it. Just eat it. Uh, is it? 
Easter Bunny? I don't know. Whoever's in charge of Easter, <laughs> don't wait for them. <laughs> I hope you have a good rest of day. Uh, stay in the house. Wash your fucking hands. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Hello, it's Sarah Milliken here. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all of my latest videos. Don't forget to like, pop a comment below and why not stick around to watch a few more. I'm sure those emails or those dishes can wait a bit longer.